Moving is a South Korean television series currently streaming on Hulu in the US. The show has been compared to Squid Game for its global popularity and Heroes for its superhero subject matter. It's estimated to have a budget of over 60 billion won, making it one of the most, if not the most, expensive K-drama ever produced. The cast is made up of A-list actors. Each episode is written by the creator of the webtoon it is based off of, and there are set to be 20 episodes. On this podcast, we'll be discussing the pilot titled Senior Year, which runs about 40 minutes. It's Tuesday, August 29th. Welcome to today's episode. What's a webtoon? What's a webtoon? It's like a comic. Like a uh, comic online? Yeah, it's one of those ones where you just keep scrolling and instead of having like different pages, it just keeps going on and on and on and on. I, I, wa- I read the first two uh, series, I read the first two like segments of this one, and it didn't really translate directly over into the television show because it shows the main character, but when he's like a kid. Oh, so it starts even earlier than Like when he's born and how like as a baby, he was already like floating. Because the whole premise of this is that you've got this high schooler who has to weigh himself down with his backpack and water canisters and anything he can find to stop himself from floating off like a balloon into the sky. Also a sequence of numbers that he has to say audibly. But But no, he says pi so that he can concentrate and not fly in the sky. It's not like it's a secret set of numbers. Do you remember when we were doing our Black Knight podcast? Yes. You said that South Korea, especially with their trailers, more specifically sci-fi with things like Alienoid, are so entertaining because they are so crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I watched the trailer for this. It's part of the reason why I wanted to do the podcast for it. Mm-hmm. And it is so gleefully over the top. There are planes exploding, multiple people flying around, bullets fly- fired everywhere, epic powers too many to be like It's named. a superhero show. Ridiculous fight scenes, floating babies. Compare it to Marvel. About. Compare it to any of the Marvel superhero shows that we've done. It, what do you think? Well, it felt like it was... Not a, the show, the trailer. It felt like, yeah, it felt like it was a South Korean version of The Boys, except even crazier. Those are the reasons why I wanted to review the show. And then actually watching it, a majority of the time, it didn't even have a lot of those things. I feel like this was the calm before the storm. Kind of like Invincible, where it's going to take a couple episodes before we really get into the maximum amount of just like how crazy this show is going to get. I still think there's plenty to talk about in the pilot episode, like plenty of action that occurred plenty of storylines that were introduced. But um, to just give you some comparison, because when you talk about a lot of those action movies and even Indian movies, um, in, in, in when you get Bollywood stuff, you'll get a lot of cheap CGI, crazy action scenes, but it looks goofy. This has a huge budget for yeah. a South Korean, like for instance, Squid Game. It had a budget of 46 billion won. Now, remember, I said that this had a budget of 60 billion won and that it is Probably the most expensive series to ever be produced there. Now, I, I bet you're wondering what the difference between yeah, billion and one. equals out to. It's about a million to, in, in dollars. It's a little different, but it, it's about a million. So it's about 60, billion, or 60 million dollars. Okay, for, for to, this. To make this. But Squid Game was even less, and they were able to do what they did there with, 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 with that amount of money. Squid Game Season 2 is far going to outreach both of these. It's it's already estimated to be around 70 to 100 so billion So that's won. going to be the biggest K-drama when that comes when it, out. When it comes out. Now, in comparison to a Marvel series, however, it doesn't even touch it. <laughs> And it's crazy because Loki, for instance, season two is only going to be six episodes, just like the first season. Right. Do you want to guess what that budget is? If this is 60 million, what is Loki? What is Loki? You're saying it's not even going to come close. I'm going to guess, oh, it's like 150 million because that's exactly. what it is for a lot of Marvel TV yeah, shows. Yeah, 140 million dollars <laughs> spaced out through six episodes. And I think I'm going to have the same realization that I had when I w- first watched The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite Korean, uh, not even drama, but Westerns ever. Yeah. Because of what they were able to do with the budget over there. It just is insane. It was like $10 million, right, to make the movie. And yet you watch it and it just seems like one of the highest, like, R- Production value movies. movies. Yeah. It, tell me about some other Korean movies that, like, you, the most famous ones you know. I have, I have a lot listed. Um, I had to take, actually, a class on it where we all, like... Like, had to watch a ton of them. Memories of Murder, Parasite, that's one of my favorite films of all time. Train to Busan, Old Boy, I Had the Good, the Bad, the Weird as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything else? I mean, I know How that there's Mother? a ton of other ones. Mother, oh, Mother, I had to watch for that class. I, I think you also watched The Host, yeah? Another yeah. Boon Jong Ho? Actually, I never saw The Host. Oh, you never saw The Host? No. And then the, I made you watch The Man from Nowhere at one point, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, that movie's out crazy. Out of all those <laughs> ones, out of all those ones, which one do you think had the highest budget and how much do you think it was? Oh, wow. Uh, uh, I would maybe have to go with 
tr train to Busan possibly because it's about zombies? It's it's close. It's at nine billion won, but it's actually not as expensive as Parasite was. Parasite was thirteen point five billion won. Still pales in comparison to what this show is. Still crazy low to what an uh, what an American movie would be. Um, and I'm sure that if you take in the profits versus how much it costs to make it would be smarter to invest in the Korean market than it would be in the U.S., <laughs> just based off percentage uh, maximization of your profits, yeah. Um, so I'll just quickly go through them. Parasite was 13.5 billion won. Memories of Murder was 3 billion won. Uh, Old Boy, 3 billion won, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, $3 million. Uh, Train to Busan, 9 billion. Um, Mother was 5 billion. The Host, 12 billion. The Man from Nowhere, 5 billion. Good, Bad, and the Weird. 11 billion. Now, the host, the American movie, the one that was like with Shirza Ronin, that was like, oh, you're talking about the 2011 horribly? one. That's no, not even, yeah. no, I know, but like, <laughs> just compare it. So, 12 million dollars to make uh, the host in Korea, and that was like one of their best movies ever made, right? It's a horror yes. movie. They even tried to make a sequel. I assume that the host here is going to be so much more because this was yeah. around the time of the young adult uh, novel really being adapted. The US version so of the times. host, which has nothing to do with the Korean version, was 40 million dollars, and that was just a big flop of a movie. So, that's just the difference in the markets and it's just crazy how like just the Korean market I think is still underappreciated in what they're able to do but when it comes to the sequel that I just brought up for the host of the Moon Jung Ho apparently the same guy who made the comic um King Fool or King Pool because those are both his um pseudonyms his, his actual name is King Do Young <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't really see how like it's that different but uh in in 2002 he launched his own personal website began posting his work online to great success and that's what reached like 300 million page views and got him famous and made it so that uh studios wanted to pre present his work he was hired I think in in the like 2010 ish time period to make the host two um for like 12 million dollars I never it never however came out, right yeah however by 2022 there have been no further updates really about the project let's transition from talking about the movies over into talking about superhero tv shows in korea because there are too many to count but i wanted to see if you could guess what their imdb scores because i know you know that this one has a pretty high one it's at 8.5 right, right now which is uh, pretty good for a TV show. And um, and the other superhero shows, Vampire Prosecutor. What do you think that would have the IMDb score of? Vampire Prosecutor? Yes, it's about, if I understand it correctly, someone who gets bitten by a vampire, he works as a prosecutor, and he uses his <laughs> new powers to uh, fight crime in the courtroom. Uh, maybe, like, uh, I mean, I know that... All Korean, these are true, by Korean the way. Korean shows... Korean shows are really, really high on IMDb. They're pretty high. So I am going to have to guess, and they usually have like around a thousand reviews. So for this one, I'll guess like an 8.6. I think you're going a little too high. It's called Vampire Prosecutor. It has a 7.5 still, but okay. Like, yeah. The next one is called The Girl Who Sees Smells. The Girl Who Sees Smells. Yes. Do you have a summary for this one? Um, I'd have to remember it. I Again, I think she fights superheroes or something with her ability that she can somehow see smells like it it helps her track down things i think 7.8 7.1 oh. <laughs> and then bring it on ghost bring it on ghost. don't ask me for a uh <laughs> i just is saw that the like title. A, is that a cross between like bring it on and ghost the movie and then they decided to merge the i don't it? think so <laughs> i think it's just about ghosts but seven seven point seven seven point six that was that you were closest on that one um, so yeah, let's go into this episode. Bong Syok, an ordinary high school student, is hiding a life-changing secret. The fact that he can fly, right? Yeah. Kind of like Superman in, in the first Smallville episode. He's floating above his bed. Very similar. On the first day of school, he gets excited when he discovers that the girl he noticed on the bus has joined his class. I have I have kind of something a little different. I have Bong Syok, a second semester senior of yes. high school, has recurring flying nightmares, not to mention that he can actually fly. He has flying powers. Throughout the episode, we see him struggle to stay grounded. Literally, he's tied to his bed each morning. And we also... Just like Oscar Isaac in Shadow Night, right? Or what, what was Moon the name? Night, you mean? Moon Night, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, we are introduced to Hui Su, the love interest who strikes a deal to alleviate her dad's financial stress after Bong Siok and Hui Su's path cross. Both school. their parents own shops. Yes. They own cooking shops. Yeah. Right. That was. <laughs> it's interesting, but it's also interesting that she has a superpower as well, but we don't get a chance to see it. We know that she's like athletic, but we don't know to what extreme that can take. We do know that the PE teacher of the school 
kind of knows everybody's superpowers. Now, he doesn't yes. talk to um, our main character, Bong Siok, but he definitely talks to Hugh Su, and he talks about how, and he basically just hands her the keys to the school. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> within the, the first the, few the, minutes. The reason for that, though, the reason for that is they're talking about scholarships, uh -huh. and because Hugh Su is so low on money, that's really the only way she's going to be able to get to college, and one of the scholarships is for P, or is like for running. It's yeah. supposed, supposed to be for track. Now, now, I remember what I said at the beginning part of the intro. This is like filled with A-list like movie stars over in um in, in, Korea. In, in Korea. And I just wanted to get your feeling on who do you think is the most famous out of everybody that you saw there? Oh wow. I would I I don't even know. I would maybe guess Frank, possibly. Who's Frank? Frank is the main villain. He had a colossal F burned onto his back, and he was oh, probably my favorite character. You're talking about John Wick guy. <laughs> Korean John Wick. The guy oh, who, uh, the assassin who just went over and like killed one yes, of the superheroes. Yeah. Yes, he looked looks like he was trying to be a ripoff of John Wick and he gets into a car and it looks like he's going to do this subtle murder. He again, assassins don't really usually walk into the place that they're about to kill someone, <laughs> yell the person's name and then go after them. But that's what this guy opted he also, to do. Well, before that, he puts on a disguise and make it like it, as a truck a driver, as a truck delivery person. Yes, I guess to get close enough to get that into was, the that building. That was my thinking of it. Yes. But at the same time, once he's in the building, he doesn't really do anything to obfuscate or like make it so that no one would recognize him actually the guy that he is supposed to kill the superhero that you were talking about makes it more like he was a politician well yeah. it makes it easier for him because he tells everyone else to leave yeah when he sees the guy i think that's a that's a example of his ego being like oh i'm a super it's like incredibles where remember the whole thing with syndrome or whatever yes, his name was he yeah. would invite these superheroes to his island and they would think oh we're so good at what we do what we do we'll be able to fight this machine and that in in, in that that instance then syndrome would just kill them can i say though yeah. that that fight scene was that's the kind of gleeful over the topness i was talking about i love that scene if this show but the cgi was actually good in it, it, it yes didn't, it didn't blur out or anything if this show just had a ton of those scenes this would be a 10 out of 10 episode really me. that the, scene the was english place in was a little weird to me well frank he only see he speaks the most english out of all the characters in the show but i guess you, his accent is what threw me you a little have bit. to say that that scene was in Engaging. There's no way to watch that and be bored by it. It did remind me the most of the boys like you were talking about earlier, especially when instead of trying to take him down, I, I, I don't remember his name being Frank, but uh, yeah, when he when the guy was about to die, Jin Chun, because he had the, um, what was it, the pen that was stuck yes. into his heart, and then he just decides to jump out the window as far as he could go. Was that just for uh, shits and giggles? I don't think he jumped out the window. Do you think he was thrown out yes, the window? Yes, I think he threw, uh, was thrown out the window. But That's I don't why. think Frank was that strong. I thought he had no, human No, no, I think, I think that i think he was that strong i think that it reminded me the most of a legion fight scene just how ridiculous yeah. those could get yeah. and how ridiculous the death was by the way this is on disney plus right it's on hulu that was a pretty gruesome death it's, or something it's produced by disney that's I think they have supposed the to be it. by disney again yeah. i don't think it's for for the kid uh, audience but at the same time it is sort of a family uh oriented show in a weird way i like, mean there's it, morals it, focuses, there. it focuses around three teenage characters and, and their parents Right? Yes, you got yeah. the mom who's very caring about her kid and wants to make sure that no one figures out that he can fly, even though every time he sees a pretty girl, <laughs> primarily uh, Hui Su, um, he gets nervous, kind of like in the comics. He just has to look at her. He stares at her and then he starts to float. But when he floats and he tries to stop himself from floating, it's always like he's trying to hold in a fart. <laughs> that, that's what you got from that? Every <laughs> time he, his face would like contort into this like, aggravated like i can't let it out right now <laughs> and then he would just hold it for a really long bon time is uh is kind of like two characters from two different tv shows one is i'm a virgo almost like yes. a, completely the same because cootie from i'm a virgo where he continually gets big in that show but both of them just cannot control their powers and his house is outfitted for his super ability. right yes no there's remember there's, the parents went through right. all that i remember you discussing in i'm a virgo to make sure that he would be able to fit in right there. they make a whole new house for him and here like safety baby i was glad him, yeah i was glad that the mom knew that he had superpowers i mean because he's, he's i know I, I, I know that you said that he had him since he was a baby but like sometimes in these tv shows maybe the teenager gets a power and then feels like they have to save it for a lot of the time i was just glad that the mom was able to know because it actually led to a lot of humor i felt like for this episode 
such as when she's just continually trying to give him things to weigh him down, giving Even him food. such weighted She's backpacks. like, he's got to get, some, he's gotta get yes. fat. <laughs> but, but she also had, there were two things about the mom. One is it reminded me of the crowded room. You want to know why? Yeah, why? Yeah, I, I have no idea Remember why. Emmy Rossum and Tom Holland, the age difference there? Yes. Okay, she's 36 in real life. Do you want to guess how old the main character is? Oh, probably in his 30s, I would guess. No, wait, what? In his 30s? I was wondering, maybe. Okay. No, they're all in their 20s. All the, all the, are like, like in the. 25. Yes, he's 25 years years old the girl is 27 years old um one of the other the the guy was vaping i think what is 29 years old. so he's gonna be in the show more i was just wondering if they were just showing him just to the show cast, that students vape in this in this according to wikipedia the cast is huge so and, and i accidentally tuned into the last episode that came out episode 11 before i tuned into this one and i couldn't tell the difference until um like a few minutes in but like each episode i think concentrates maybe a little bit on a different character Oh, this so this isn't actually just going to be Bong si Oak's show. Well, obviously not, because by the end, the mom pulls out a gun, which it's the second episode in a row of something that I've watched where the mom ends up being like a secret agent or something and pulls out a gun by the end. And <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this After show, who's Aaron Carter? I feel like it has to get ridiculous. When that mom was cleaning that gun at the very end of the episode, yeah. it was the, it was the type of ridiculousness I'm waiting for. I don't think I'm giving too much away when I say that all all the abilities because she was tracking and she found out about the murder um by frank as you as you said mm -hmm. um it, it, all of them are aware because they have they passed on their genes yeah so like right. there's i assume everybody in the show has a superhero ability kind uh, of like yeah. with heroes what i like about the show is that they don't throw the superhero abilities in your face as much as a lot of superhero shows and they're not snarky with it it's more about how they can be a bit of a curse to people and how they're they're trying to hide them. It's and, a little bit like that X-Files episode in season 10 with Reese Darby, where it's like he didn't want to control becoming an alien mm -hmm. that episode, but he ends up just, it, it just kind of happens to him. It also reminded me of Invincible a little bit because you have the same type of setting, the high school setting, but also the, all the like responsibilities and as you were saying, curses, consequences that come with getting these superpowers. And you can kind of tell who the good guy and the bad guys are already starting out because you got the guy who's deleting people People. Yes. You have uh, the principal who was had a constant cold, but that seems like he was a mean dude. The temporary PE teacher, the part-time PE teacher, there seems to be some um, uh, tension between him and the guy who's trying to protect these uh, students. And then there was a, even a security guard who gave uh, Bonsiok a weird look. So there's just a lot. And then a weird governmental agency, too, that, yeah. that seemed to be upset that uh, Zhang Chung was um, killed. Uh, I so, think that Frank is obviously supposed to be the main antagonist. I feel like for the next, how you said, 20 episodes, he's supposed to be the one that you're really looking at. But I think the principal, I think that the principal is kind of like, obviously, like you were saying, maybe not the nicest dude. I think he's supposed to be secondary antagonist. Yeah. I feel like they're kind of keeping him in the background for maybe if Frank dies too early on or something like that. You still didn't answer my question as to, like you did, but you got it wrong. So I'm going to ask okay. again, who's the most famous in this show? <laughs> who's the most famous? Yeah, who would be if like we were watching something and Tom Hanks appeared just sort of in a role and we'd be like, well, obviously it's him. Uh, I, you know what? I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that it was Hu Su's father. Yes, and that is correct. It's the fried oh, chicken I, shop I, guy. I, I had no idea. Because I mean, he's got like the humor and it's mixed in with him always wanting to give her the money, even though she really needs more money, but she didn't want to ask his for that. His character didn't make a lot of sense to me because he's talking about how he's so like how he's in debt. He it's wants so to support obvious, his daughter. But he opens up a chicken shop which you it seems would be a lot more money and a lot more trouble than what's worth to it's, try and get money yeah I, I don't think so i think it's his attempt to make a business work so that he would be able to afford her her um her education and stuff um it is weird when she goes in there and she starts asking for hundreds of thousands of won and then you have to <laughs> like then put it into your head and it's not it's not the same i don't even think it was won that she was asking for because hundreds of thousands of won would still be like tens of thousands of dollars. Well, I could have heard it wrong, but I think that the PE teacher is speaking to Husu in that scene talking about the scholarship and he, pu he pulls out the number 1.5 million won. Or that wasn't, something like no, that. that wasn't during the PE. That was after school. She went to like a college campus to ask how much stuff was worth. But but the guy who uh, we're talking about, the dad here, he has been in four of the top 10 highest grossing films in South Korea. Four out four. of the top ten. So, so Parasite has one, to be one of them. No, no, no. Right? no. One, two, seven, and ten. Oh, okay. Like I, that, that many. 
I feel like, well, that's insane. What's number one? I you don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha- I haven't uh, my, seen my any course, of them I, I was going to ask if I had seen any of them. But I don't. I not. don't think so. And I didn't write all of them down. I did also find it interesting though that they did have someone from uh, the Man from Nowhere. The guy. I don't want to ruin the movie, but he was one of the villains, the main villains in it. Um, not one oh, of the fighters okay. though. But also, yeah, one of the holdbacks, I think, of this show, even though it finds an international audience, is that it's very hard to remember the names if you're yes. not familiar with. And, and it reminds me a lot of uh, Squid Game in that way, too, because if you asked me to write them down with a gun to my head, I would not be able to do anybody, I don't even remember the main character's name. but Sangwoo because of the meme, because he went oh. to SNU <laughs> business school. <laughs> but besides that, yeah, it's hard with the names if you're from the U.S. It's a petty grievance. Um, but one of my pros, though, is that it does have K-drama cliches, but they're not as there's not like the super cheesy romance yes. or the super bad CGI like we already discussed. I, I went through a lot of um, like I went to all those polls of like what the biggest cliches in K-dramas are. Right. Yeah. And, and what do they say they, they like some of them check mark the box and some of them don't that we didn't get any piggyback rides here. <laughs> Uh, back- Wait, don't don't speak yet. I feel like if this show were to do it, it wouldn't be too out. Back right? hugs. I had to go back and check to see if there back were any hugs? back hugs. Yeah, where someone oh, hugs so, someone okay. from the back. Um, or wrist grabs, like where they stop them for with a dramatic wrist grab. We didn't get any of those. We did get a love triangle. I'm pretty sure that Kim uh, Bong Sook uh, and Hu Hui Su, right? Yes. And then also, I think the Lee guy, right? The one that the person was doing her Instagram um, feed on. Yeah, yeah, who yeah, yeah She yeah. was like, he's so handsome, blah, blah, blah. That, the kind of uh, the school president or something. He was going around with the cell phone block thing. Which... I thought his name was Kang Hoon. That's why I had it written down. His last name is Kang Hoon, um, but his first name is Lee. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I think he is going to also like uh, Hui Su. He's, I, I think he's going to be the third main character in this thing. I think that we just were supposed to be introduced him this episode but i think his role is going to be a lot more expanded on yeah he went into the pe teacher afterwards and he was like so she has a superpower right and like Mm -hmm. that's who i have to get close to so uh, yeah obviously there's stuff and his parents also own a shop like he so went they, home. Just, they just all own a shop. Remember, he time. went home and his dad was like, <laughs> yes. "Oh, you're you're back or something." Um, and then we, the rich boy, poor girl. Uh, th- we do get sort of that yeah. because she is a poor girl. <laughs> She's a very poor girl. Um, evil, <laughs> evil mother-in-law. We didn't get one of those. Um, and then we have staring, which absolutely staring. Yes, yes. I feel like that's in every K drama. But this one, yes, a lot of staring goes on, especially by the primary character when he's trying to fight back his powers and he just can't control his uh, attraction to the girl. <laughs> and then the flashbacks. We haven't gotten flashbacks quite yet, but every uh, person has a person who plays them as a younger version for the kids. So I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a lot of flashbacks. We got a quick cut with Husu. We got a quick cut with her in the forest. It might not have even been a flashback, but don't you remember? We see her, like, I guess, slice something or do something. Oh, something yeah, else. but that was when she's still playing herself. Right. I'm, I'm saying, like, there's versions of them as kids, which would make sense with the comics, like I said, where they start off as kids. And also, if you want to see the parents, if any of them have superpowers, um, doing their abilities and stuff in the past, I'm sure we're going to get that. Uh, I do think it transcends culture in a similar way that Squid Game does because there are just elements that everybody can link to uh, if you're watching a superhero program like this. But you do get some stuff that kind of like with Parasite, you're like, oh, well, the cuisine is quite different. Uh, Bulgogi, (laughs) we don't get that too often. Uh, That's barbecue. Tonkatsu, which is the um, type of food that the mom makes in her restaurant. Um, Also with language, as a whole, we don't have too much of a difference between our formal speaking and our regular speaking. But you could see when he got on the bus with the girl and they were she started talking to uh, him like they were cousins or friends and stuff. And he was almost offended because of how close like and she was like, oh, we're kids. We can talk like this. Well, she I think she also says that that's how her old school that she moved from used to talk to each other. Yeah, but it just it reminds me of when I took Spanish and then like there's the informal version and the formal (laughs) version and, and and yeah in different cultures it's it's kind of insulting if you act informally to people who you're supposed to be like very respectful to um and then well it is like heroes but not enough where it feels like any sort of a ripoff which aside i was also from, very happy aside from the gruesome death this surprisingly enough felt like no ordinary family that hmm. get to, a kid-friendly version of that to a fault because i mean like it, that, that also Big focused Mackie. with that well that focused on a, again a family but it was it had multiple superpowers right like i am only i'm a, almost but they they got into like a plane accident and they got there it's kind of like misfits. that's that's kind of what i was talking about with characters getting the powers as opposed to being born with 
with them, but who Sue? Like, I can almost assure you she has a flashlight type of power. That's why she's running around or whatever. A then. flashlight type of power? What's that? Fla mean? A flashlight type of power. Oh, like where she's, she's just super fast. fast. And I remember in No Ordinary Family, they had someone that was like that as well. I also have Ragnarok ran down here because Husu, the face, the financial difficulties that she faces is a lot like the main characters, uh, Magne and Laritz in that uh, in that show because they had uh, face struggles in the season two premiere. Now, remember when uh, he killed, uh, the assassin killed Jin Chung, he asked him if he had any kids because mm -hmm. he's also hunting those kids. So that means that he's going to go after the high schoolers next. Yes, that, that, that's kind of obvious. After the parents. And that's kind of like Jumper. Not the fact that they're going after kids, but the fact that like, uh, what was it, Sam, um, who played the bad guy in that? Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson kept following Jumper and just like, we can't have these weird mutants running around there, even though... Yeah, that's but, what the end of the episode basically shows. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it, so as I said already, it's weird. My cons are less cons and more questions. It's weird that all the parents own shops. Uh, it, it's also strange how like they can't have smartphones in school, but the guy can just vape freely. Yes, that was that was incredibly surprising. To see. <laughs> I was like, if this was an American show, that vape would be gone immediately. It wouldn't just be about the vape being gone. I feel like that guy would have been sent to the principal. <laughs> you just don't vape in class class um and then uh, running to uh your school like that fast I, I it was also funny when he got called truant because he didn't make it in time mm -hmm. and the guy closed the gate on him and, and then, then he had he to, clean to the clean toilets yeah yeah but when she was running and to get to the bus I've had to do that before for a final in college, and it is not fun. I'm tough, but that's it. That again, I think that that was hinting at the fact that she is going to yeah, be super fast. But I'm saying that's also a part where everybody can put themselves into that position where it's like, oh no, yes. you can't. Like, this is very important, even though it's just one day in school. My cons for this, I don't have that many, but one is that the pacing for this is slow. As much as I said it's the calm before the storm, I very much mean that I feel like it's Chainsaw Man, where it's like the first five episodes of that, and I love chainsaw man but we're, we're pretty slow it at least with the black knight it gave you what it was 100 percent. it knew that it was an action show and it just gave it to you it gave you that up front also like you were saying i have just more things i want to know about the characters like gang hoon he's supposed to be i feel like a big character in the next coming episodes but we don't get too much on him this really was just focused on bong siok and hu su I mean, obviously, the guy who's the most famous person in South Korea is going to get some crazy yes. storyline, um, and, and I can't wait to see that. I'm sure we've got a ton of characters we haven't been introduced to, but uh, but yeah, I think you're saying you're going to continue to watch it, right? I will definitely be uh, going to watch it. I'm the, going to give this episode an 8 out of 10. There's a lot of moving parts in moving, and that's <laughs> not a bad thing. Like in Harlan Coben's Shelter, that was a bad thing, because it felt like everything was supposed to be just a distraction away from the main plot, which then took away from the whole series. This feels like everything's going to add on top of each other because it's based off the webtoon and they know where they're going with it. Kind of like the early seasons of The Walking Dead, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'll give it an 8.5, so I'll go just a teeny bit higher than you and then um, end this with saying that there's another show out there, which I just, I, one of these characters is in, that's called I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay. So. <laughs> then that hasn't come out yet no that came out like 20 years oh, ago or something it wait, was like what? a romance or something yeah there's there's a ton of weird name shows but that one just struck me as particularly funny to bring up i'm a cyborg but that's okay um thanks for listening we'll see you on the next episode hope you enjoyed this one bye bye